is from New York and Albany, and I'm very happy to introduce to you Ms. Dion Mathardin. to thank Felden and the Cleveland Library staff for organizing this timely discussion and inviting me to share my perspective on how we can begin to strategize and move public libraries forward. I'm particularly honored to rep be representing one of the largest li public library systems in the country serving 2.5 million people. While all public libraries have been impacted by the dire state of the economy, Large systems, especially organizations like Brooklyn Public Library that serve economically, educationally, and culturally diverse populations have been uniquely challenged. Brooklyn Public Library has 60 locations providing vital programs and resources to a customer base comprising the most populous borough in New York City. As I said, there are 2.5 million residents living in Brooklyn of whom 40% were born outside of the United States, 600,000 are under the age of 18, 72% do not have a college degree, and nearly 30% live below the poverty line. There are also over 150 languages spoken in Brooklyn, and the range of dialects combined with the earlier demographics that I share only scratch the surface of the dynamic set shape and influence diverse library service needs of Brooklyn. During these difficult times, we need not simply focus on the rise in library service usage, but think about how we can retain these, use, these users as we move forward. We've all experienced a swell in our usage across the library system and are really seeing a squeeze on the limited resources that are available to us. We've been forced to scrutinize, prioritize, and make tough choices as we strive to maintain our commitment to providing equitable access and service. Has the balance been easy? Absolutely not. But even as we're facing great economic adversity, Brooklyn Public Library has continuously been presented with even greater opportunities to advance the mission of our organization. As we know, bearing financial strain is not a new phenomenon for Brooklyn Public Library and not public libraries in general. During the most economic downturns, such as the Great Depression of the 1930s, and during localized financial stru struggles, such as during the 1970s in New York City, we felt the brunt. In fact, even in good times, we sometimes find that public libraries and library funding are deemed expendable. I recently came across a quote in the comments section of a blog that summed it up best. Libraries are considered an invaluable community resource, but an intolerable financial burden. Now, it is particularly crucial to do all we can to dispel this perception and treatment of public libraries. Currently, Brooklyn Public Library is facing a 26.5% or $23.6 million reduction in city funding alone in our upcoming fiscal year. While we've begun to mobilize the public and advocate to elected officials in, hoping of, in hopes of having some level of that funds restored, BPL has endured similar cuts of this magnitude in the past. Following the September 11th attacks in 2001, we lost 22% of our funding. As a result, our library hours decreased from 41 hours of service to 31. We were barely able to keep the doors open five days a week. And as difficult as this period was for Brooklyn Public Library and each budget season thereafter, we were forced to absorb additional cuts and we still maintained relevance and created value within our community. Committing to innovation is not only possible up against fiscal challenges and other adversities. It's necessary. Over the years, particularly during some of the most recent fiscal periods, Brooklyn Public Library has been able to expand service offerings, establish new partnerships, 
strengthen bonds with communities we serve, and set new records. Just last month alone, our circulation was up 26%, and this spike followed back-to-back -back circulation records set in January and February. And since I'm talking to the library world, I should just note that that was not DVDs. 81% of what we serve is books. <laughs> Maintaining innovation as a key component of our survival has been an important contributor to our steady growth and success. Innovation is not rigidly defined as abstract ideas, unattainable goals, and lavish results. Innovation is taking risks. Innovation is working smart. Innovation is embracing new and different methods of increasing efficiency. At times, innovation depends on out of the. At times, innovation develops out of ideas or functions that already exist and just need to be refashioned. And often in the public library world, innovation stems from making a way out of limited resources you have. In most cases, the limitations for public library systems are funding and staff. In spite of layered budget cuts and an undersized workforce, I'd like to share some of what Brooklyn Public Library has been able to accomplish. Just last year, we launched Para Los Niños, a bilingual early literacy program with emphasis on family literacy. We launched a two-year learning program for middle schoolers with a unique history and cultural resource component for our uh, history program. We also launched Today's Teens, Tomorrow's Techies, which is a technology training institution for teens with built-in opportunities to become part of BPL's team. Just two months ago, we've launched a professional training innovation program that introduces high school students from different cultural backgrounds to the library. We purchased four new bookmobiles, the only kids mobile in New York State. We launched a Biblio bus, which is the first mobile library for Spanish-speaking populations, and two general bookmobiles for our libraries that are closed. We launched a partnership with UPS that helps us to be able to move our materials throughout our 60 locations more effectively. We were able to increase our hours of service and maintain hours of service even with an $11 million reduction in budget. We launched a skills training program that was first funded